Okay, so this is the last section in Chapter 6, 6.8, and it is called the Irrational Root Theorem. This section is primarily going to be what puts everything together. By the end of this section, I'm going to give you polynomials galore, and you're going to be able to pretty much find all the zeros of those polynomials using all the different methods that we've worked on. But we're going to start with just what the Rational Root Theorem itself is about. And what the Rational Root Theorem is about is it's going to tell us the possible rational numbers that are roots or zeros of any given polynomial. And this is the Rational Root Theorem. I got this from your book. Incidentally, your book calls this the Rational Zero Theorem, but remember, as we've talked about a lot this year, roots and zeros are synonyms. So, they mean the same thing. If you hear Rational Root Theorem, it's not a different theorem. It's the same thing as the Rational Zero Theorem. Frankly, I learned it as the Rational Root Theorem, so that's what I call it. But be comfortable if your book calls it something different or another book calls it something different, that it means the same thing. So here's what the Rational Zero Theorem is saying. If you got a polynomial, okay, I'm going to break down all these words. You can write them down in your note sheet, but let me break them down for you. If you have a polynomial, the coefficients are integers, every zero that is a rational number, can be written in the form p over q, where p is a factor of the constant term, and q is a factor of the leading coefficient. Whoa, I went a little too fast. Let me go back to that slide. So, here's what I'm saying, and we can look at the example of that. Okay, and I'll erase a little bit of this highlighting so you can see it. So we've got a polynomial here, okay? What the rational root theorem is saying, 4 thirds is a zero of f of x because 4 is a factor of the p, which is negative 40, and 3 is a factor of the q, which is the leading coefficient, which is 6. Okay? Why is that important? Because now we're going to be able to come up with the possible rational zeros that we can test out using synthetic division when we're asked to find all zeros. See, prior to knowing this theorem, and I think I said this before, the best way to find all zeros if a polynomial is not factorable would just be random guessing. I mean, you could also look at the x-intercepts on a graph, but let's say you don't have a graph available. The only other way to do it would be to just randomly guess numbers until we get a zero. And... It could be a nice number, it could be a not-so-nice number, there's an infinitely many number of those numbers to try to test. So the Rational Root Theorem is really going to help us hone down that list to something that's a little bit more manageable when we're asked to find zeros. For right now, all I want to do, though, in this video is come up with possible rational roots if I give you a polynomial. In subsequent lessons, we'll actually be solving these polynomials, but you have to understand where the list of possible rational roots are coming from before you can actually test them out. Because testing them out, as we've seen before, is, is nothing more than synthetic division, so I trust that with some practice we'll get that quickly. But I want to make sure we can get down how to write the possible rational roots. So that's what this video is going to be all about. So let's look at the first example. I gave you a polynomial to find all rational roots of, and it's f of x equals x cubed minus 2x squared plus 5x plus 12. Okay, a lot of numbers, a lot of different terms, but there's really only two I care about, and that is the constant, which we call p, and the coefficient, of the, or the leading coefficient, excuse me, which is 1 here, and we call that q. So all I need to do is make a list of the factors of those two numbers, and I'm pretty much good to go. So we'll start with the factors of p. Okay, the factors of 12 are going to be plus or minus 1, plus or minus 2, plus or minus 3, plus or minus 4, plus or minus 6, and plus or minus 12. Okay, just finding all the numbers that divide evenly into 12. Now you're probably asking yourself, why am I using the plus or minus symbol? Well, that's because, and your book doesn't really say this in the rational zero theorem that they give, but we have to actually use plus or minus because the coefficient we really just take the coefficient without looking at the sign in front of it. So as a result, we have to look at plus or minus because we could have positives or negatives that are factors of 12. I mean, negative 3 divides evenly into 12, so we have to include it. We'll do the same thing with the factors of Q, and in this case, it's 1, which is a prime number. It only has one factor itself. So now to get all the possible rational zeros, I'm going to take every number in the top list and divide it by every number in the bottom list. This is easy because the bottom list has only one number. 
and it's 1, so there's really no division happening. So all the possible rational roots for this polynomial are just plus or minus 1, plus or minus 2, plus or minus 3, plus or minus 4, plus or minus 6, and plus or minus 12. This is great. This means, well, let's see about what it means. These aren't the answers. Well, we know they can't be the answers because it's a third degree polynomial, and that's way too many numbers. But, if f of x has a rational root, which we don't even know that for sure yet, because we haven't tested anything out, it can only be one of those 12 numbers. 7 will not be a rational root of this function, because it doesn't fit that model of being written as a factor of p divided by a factor of q. That's the point of the rational root theorem. We still have to guess and check, but now I only have to guess and check 12 numbers until I find one, as opposed to infinite, an infinite number of numbers. Okay, That's the point of this. They are the only numbers that can make this possibly be a zero. All right, let's look at the next example. f of x equals 4x to the fifth plus x to the fourth minus 2x cubed minus 5x squared plus 8x plus 16. Again, big polynomial, but as far as finding rational roots are concerned, I only care about those two numbers, p and q, which in this case the constant is 16 and the coefficient is 4. So we'll find factors of 16 first. Okay, there's a lot of them. Think about them. Take a couple seconds, pause the video, write them down in your notes. When you want to see the answers, pick up the video again. Okay, so check your list. I got plus or minus 1, plus or minus 2, plus or minus 4, plus or minus 8, and plus or minus 16. All right, now we get to do the same thing again with the factors of 4. Again, how about you pause the video, take a couple seconds, write those down on your own. Did you get plus or minus 1, plus or minus 2, and plus or minus 4? Hope so. Remember, it's just all the whole numbers that divide evenly into 16 and 4. They're the factors. All right, so to get the possible rational roots, I am now going to divide everything in the top by every number on the bottom. We're going to do this very meticulously so we don't miss anything. The other key too is you're probably saying to yourself, my gosh, there's a lot more numbers here than there were in the first example. I'm going to have to do a lot of division, aren't I? Well, not really, because remember what the rational root theorem said. It's p over q in simplest form. We're going to form a bunch of fractions, and some of these fractions might be reduced to fractions that we've already included in our list, so we don't need to double write them. And you'll see what I mean by this. All right, so we'll start with the 1. So we'll put everything over 1, because they're the easy ones. So we get plus or minus 1, plus or minus 2, plus or minus 8, I'm sorry, plus or minus 4, plus or minus 8, and plus or minus 16. Just rewriting the top list. Now, I'm going to put everything over 2. But think about this. We'll do 1 half, 1 over 2, 2 over 2, which reduces to 1, which is already in my list. 4 over 2, which reduces to 2, which is already in my list. 8 over 2, which reduces to 4, which is already in my list. And 16 over 2, which is 8, which is already on my list. So, there's only one new thing, and that's plus or minus 1 half. We'll do the same thing with plus or minus 4. We get 1 over 4, 2 over 4, which reduces to 1 half, already in the list. 4 over 4, which reduces to 1, already in the list. 8 over 4, which reduces to 2, already on the list. 16 over 4, which reduces to 4, also already on the list. So dividing everything by 4 gets me only one new number, and that's plus or minus, well, two new numbers, plus or minus 1 fourth. Okay? So notice that. Be a little bit careful with that. Some of the fractions are going to be reducible. Okay? In theory, we were doing 15 division problems. We had five numbers on the top, three numbers on the bottom. But we really only get seven numbers from our list. Well, and their opposites would make 14. But again, guessing and checking 14 possible rational roots is a little bit better than guess or ch guessing and checking an infinite number of rational roots. All right, we'll try one more. g of x equals 3x cubed minus 4x plus 10. Okay? It doesn't matter if it's missing some terms. I know when we're dealing with synthetic division, that's an issue, and we will be dealing with synthetic division when we actually solve g of x and find its roots. But for right now, only care about two numbers, 10, the constant, and the leading coefficient, 
which is 3. Incidentally, remember, leading coefficients are the first coefficients only if the polynomial is given to you in standard form. If for some reason this is not written in standard form, like on a homework problem or on a test, make sure it is before you apply this. I don't want you factoring the wrong number, because if you do, you're going to be guessing checking from the wrong list. All right, so let's start by getting the factors of 10. Again, I want you to try it on your own. Pause the video, and when you're ready to see them, you can start it up again. Okay, so I got plus or minus 1, plus or minus 2, plus or minus 5, and plus or minus 10. All right, we'll do this again with 3. It's prime, so it should be pretty easy. Pause the video, and you can start it up when you have your list. Did you get plus or minus 1 and plus or minus 3, I hope? Alright, so now, let's get our possible rational roots. Let's put everything on the top list, the factors of 10, over everything on top of, or of, over everything on the factors of Q list. Pause the video. Start it up again when you have all your lists and you think you've got everything. Okay, I get plus or minus 1 plus or minus 2, plus or minus 5, and plus or minus 10 from putting everything over 1. Now, because we're dealing with prime numbers here as our factors of Q, we're not going to have that issue of reducing things. So we're going to put everything over 3 and get four more unique pairs of rational roots. Plus or minus 1 third, plus or minus 2 thirds, plus or minus 5 thirds, and plus or minus 10 thirds. Okay? So you've seen some examples worked out on how to find possible rational roots. I'm giving you a couple more examples at the bottom of your note sheet to try. Again, just find the rational roots. Very soon we'll actually put all this together and figure out which ones of these numbers are roots. Um, but as for now, this is enough. So if you have any questions, feel free to bring them to class, and I will see you tomorrow.